let's make a custom block model. Alright, we find ourselves back in Blockbench once more and in this tutorial we're going to be making a custom block model here for Minecraft Java Edition for our tutorial series actually. So once again for this we're going to select the Java block item over here and this is just going to be the, let's call this the gem infusing station and just hit confirm. So for a block, well basically the similar things like the item is basically very similar to the item. However, in this case there are actually two things that we have to keep in mind. First of all, of course, that we don't necessarily go bigger than 16 by 16 by 16 because of course if we actually make this this would now be a you know actual block size and if you go above that then we can sometimes run into some really weird issues if you have a block that's bigger than an entire block so keep that in mind that you pretty much want to stay within 16 by 16 by 16 and then you should be fine so for our gem infusing station over here i'm basically just going to let's first of all make some legs over here so that it can stand on something that's going to be solid over here. So two by two and by fours. And then I duplicate them by pressing control D. So now we have the legs. Let's actually group them together. So make a group. I'm going to select all of them by selecting the lowest one, holding shift and then selecting the highest one. Everything in between will get selected as well. We're going to put it into the group. This is going to be the legs. And then let's just add another cube over here. And that's going to be the sort of support where everything goes on top of. So we're just going to do this. So this is now going to be height of four. So that's going to be fine. And then we're just going to make this height of maybe something like this. So six. Now we're going to be 10 voxel high. I think that that's going to be okay. And then let's just add another cube for something, you know, on top of it, basically. And I want a nice cool thing in the middle. So what I want to do is we're just going to make this maybe a four by four. I think a four by four would be fine. That would be okay. Let's just do this. Let's try to do this in the middle. And what I actually want to do is I want to make this, you know, size zero. So if you do this, right, you can see that the Z size is now zero, but there is still, you know, like a th paper thin pixel basically is going to be seen. And that is also what is going to be seen. So that's pretty cool. Let's just duplicate this. Let's duplicate this as well and rotate it around. So let's just get Let's get this guy rotated around. Now you can see the pivot is at the bottom. So let's center the pivot and then we can also rotate it around here. Oh, I have to duplicate it first. There you go. And then let's rotate it around. There we go. Let's move it about. And there we have it. Let's duplicate it one more time. And there we go. So now we have a tray. We have to move it around. So let's select all of them, group them together as well. And this is going to be the tray. Now I actually want to move this into the middle. So once again, I can just get in bird's eye view over here and I can move the entire thing, which is pretty freaking awesome indeed. We can even use the wireframe mode over here to really count this. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we definitely are sure that this is in the center. Pretty freaking awesome indeed. Now for the tray, I actually also want to add sort of a bottom of the tray. So we're going to add another cube over here. Let's just get this up. And this is also going to be size, you know, zero in this case. And let's just move it in there. Let's size it up to four by four. If you were to go into the game right now, if we just gave it like random textures, then this would flicker a little bit because this cube and this cube occupy the same texture layer. So what you actually want to do is you want to take this tray over here and just move it in the Y direction, just the tiniest bit up. So basically like 0.01. That is already everything that you need to do so that it doesn't clip into the other texture. It's basically Z fighting, quote unquote. So it's basically not sure which texture it should display above the other one. If you just make this a little bit higher, then it basically already works. That's pretty cool indeed. And now the question is, okay, how are we going to texture all of this madness? Well, we're not going to do anything too crazy over here. We're going to make the tray just a little bit of a white color. So let's just select all of them, make a new texture. That's going to be the tray texture. And I'm just going to throw in sort of a white over here. So let's, let's just do like a rough white gray. And I'm actually going to color it at the top left here, just so that I can easily get all of the different sides. And there we go. Now we have the tray colored. That's going to be okay. When it comes to the, you know, actual cube over here, let's make a new texture as well. That's going to be the main texture. Let's just call it like that. And you can see once again, we have all different sides here. And in this case, I'm just going to pick a little bit of a gray. Let's just, there we go. We can also size this up by adding the size over here. So we can just draw over this, making sure that I'm trying, I'm trying to stay inside of the textures just in case. I mean, it's not actually bad if you are outside of the textures, but I do want to stay in them. Now, this is of course one solid block. That's not too good. We can also use the gradient tool. And what that is going to do is you can basically, well, change the gradient over here. So that's going to be very interesting indeed. So you can basically draw a gradient. You can see 
There we go. Now we can, can sort of draw a gradient over here. So the gradient tool basically always uses the last color and then, well, basically fades it to nothing. So you can, in theory, just, you know, add some different variety over here with the gradient tool. It's not the best one, but it is kind of cool. You can also draw shapes over here. So you can see, I can just draw some shapes, which is also pretty good. The paint we we've already seen before. So it sometimes can be quite difficult to properly do some stuff here. You can also change the opacity so that you, you know, basically can grade stuff here as well, right? So that you have a, you know, rough gradient over here. Or in theory, you can, of course, also import the texture. You can save the texture, import it into Photoshop, Paint.net, GIMP, and change it there as well. So that also always works. But, you know, I'm not the best at textures in this case. So we're just pretty much going to keep it like this. The legs are going to have a little bit of a different texture as well. So let's just do the leg texture here as well like texture and let's just do maybe like a light gray here as well and you can see i still have the opacity on so let's actually get the opacity full up to 255 again there we go and then let's just fill this up roughly make this a little bit smaller get me like to a size one again there we go and now all of our legs are also alert and there we go so when it comes to the texturing and the modeling, making something that looks good, that's always going to be a difficult task, but that is pretty much for your imagination and your creativity to discover. This is pretty much what I kind of wanted to have. Let's also go into the display. And this is, of course, now a block. So this block in this case actually also changes so we can change the size. I usually recommend just going like absolutely way, way smaller here for the blocks because usually the blocks are, well, I mean, way too big, right? Like... They just display way too big, the custom ones, and there they go. That actually works pretty well, so we can just point to five in all directions. I think that that's going to be a good scaling over here. That's going to be pretty good for the first person, right? I think we can make this a little bit smaller, maybe 0.75 in all directions. That might already be enough so that it doesn't cover that much of the screen. And maybe move this about a little bit, so maybe like a one in the x direction. Yes, and we're going to do the same thing here. One over here, and then a 0.75 for all three scales. There we go for the head. You know, let's just make it so that it looks kind of weird. There we go. That's a very interesting head you have there. That's, that's great. For the ground, I also think maybe 0.5 as its size. You can, of course, always play around with those numbers, you know, making it so that it looks, you know, somewhat interesting to you. There we go. I think that that's going to be okay. In the frame, I basically always want a little bit of a rotation in there. I think that that makes it a little bit inter more interesting to look at. Maybe also 0.75. Well, maybe not a 4.75 should be fine. There we go, something like this. And then when it comes to the GUI, I also think you should always rotate it around a little bit, make this a little bit smaller. So let's try 0.5 over here in the GUI maybe. And then let's see when we rotate it around that it actually looks like a proper block. We can make this maybe even a little bit bigger. Maybe 7.5 will be enough. It sort of goes directly on the sides of the inventory, so I'm not 100% sure. Maybe 0.6 would be okay. So once again, this is genuinely something that you just have to play around with a little bit for your own blocks and your own, you know, custom model files, basically, until it looks right for you. I'm actually quite happy with this. So once I am happy with this, I can press Control S and it's going to prompt me to save the textures first and foremost. So we're just going to save all of the different textures here and then those textures are saved. And then it's immediately also going to save a JSON file, Gem Infusing Station JSON. And that is immediately going to be our block model JSON file. So we can actually take a look at this. There we go. And the similar thing happens here as well. So this would be our block model JSON file. And this also has all of the things that we've, you know, previously seen in the item model JSON file, right? The elements, all of that is basically done via this block model JSON file, including the textures here. So this would be the only thing that we need to change once we're actually importing this into our project. And once again, to save the block bench file, just go to file, save project, and then you can save the BB model file. There we go. And that should be pretty good as well. Now, I actually am not that big of a fan that this has the same color as the rest because then it looks sort of solid. So let's just make this a little bit different color over here. There we go. Now it looks a little bit better. And once again, I've changed something. So now I can just press the control S again. And then it's going to change both the JSON file as well as the texture that we've already saved because the texture is now linked with the actual PNG file. And there we go. That is pretty much how easy it can be to make a custom block over here. Now there's one more particular thing for the block and that is the voxel shape. So in theory, of course, a block, right, when you hover over it, it has a shape of 16 by 16 by 16. That is the little outline that you see. And if you, for example, have a slab, that is that outline is also only half a block. Now for this block, if we were to just import it and do nothing else, then this would have a voxel shape of 16 by 16 by 16. And it would look kind of weird. Now we can install a plugin that is called the Mod Utils plugin that allows you to export voxel shapes. 
Now, what I usually recommend, especially with very, very complicated block models, that you just approximate the voxel shape. We're going to see this in a new tutorial that's going to come out next week. That is going to be the block model tutorial for both Forge and Fabric, by the way. We're going to import this particular block model file, and I'm going to explain more what the voxel shape actually does and why you should not have an exact voxel shape for your blocks. But that's going to be it for this block bench series and this block bench tutorial. I genuinely hope you found all of those useful and you learned something new, and I'll see you all in the next tutorials. So, yeah.